Hey traders, welcome to a global macro update. This video, we won't really be going over any price action or charts. It's more talking about the demographics of different countries, primarily, primarily looking at four different countries, Japan, United States, India, and the Philippines. And you're probably asking why in the world are we analyzing these four countries compared to every other country in the world. And it's mainly because they have pretty polar opposites in terms of the demographics that they are showing with Japan being quite a bit of a uh, outlier in terms of how far they are within the uh, kind of de demographics that we normally see around the world. So this first chart that we are going to be looking at is the ratio for the dependent versus independent individuals. So this is dependent people as a percentage of the working age population. In other words, the definition is age dependency ratio is the ratio of dependents uh, for people younger than 15 or older than 64 to the working age population, those that are 15 to 64 years old. So obviously you want to have uh, a decreasing ratio because then there is more people coming into the workforce to support the dependent individuals in that community in that country so you want to see it going down and we see that there's four different countries here the outlier the significant outlier of these four different lines is definitely going to be japan we've already talked about japan in the previous global macro updates talking about the difficulties of the demographics in the country of Japan. And we can see it's rising substantially from the early 90s, going from 43-ish percent to above 67 percent for the uh, dependency ratio, meaning there is more and more younger people in the workforce that has to take care of uh, a older generation primarily. So in Japan, they don't have a lot of people born versus the people that are retiring or people that are retired. So we can see within this next diagram here, the population pyramid for Japan. And uh, this isn't exactly uh, exactly on par with the recent studies, but this does show the shift of the population pyramid when there is a large demographic coming into a society or into uh, a, a community or a country or whatever the case may be. In the 1960s, we had a massive boom in uh, new babies. This is kind of like the baby boomer version of Japan. And uh, we see that the initial entrance of this large demographic is initially very inflationary. This is why we got the asset bubble in Japan through the 80s. In the 80s, Japan was on an absolute roar. It was a huge boom in the 80s in Japan. And 1989 was the end of that boom. And 1990s was the entire lost decade from 1990s until 2000s. Japan was in what they call a lost decade, a major stagflation, deflation. They could not get any inflation. Now, why is this? The people who came into the market, these new babies, have to buy everything brand new. They have to buy couches, houses, cars, toothbrushes, clothes, everything, you name it. If you're a young person, you're going to buy everything, maybe used but new, but whatever the case may be, you are purchasing items for your first time. When you get later into the cycle, you make more money, you can start investing, then you get a real estate asset bubble where you have a little bit more extra money to put in. And because the demographics that you're is so large the older generation has a finite amount of assets that they're holding and the new demographics coming in the new baby boomers just have so much more currency and you know more people fighting for the same goods services and assets will increase the price of those goods services and assets and that's exactly what we got in the japanese asset bubble and that's the same thing we're getting within the united states right now because the demographics is similar uh, america is around 10 years uh, after Japan in terms of the average age, we'll get to that in a second, but demographics is very important. And then once we get to the peak, then you got the peak of the asset bubble in some sense, because you have the highest amount of demographics with the most amount of money, able to purchase large assets, investments, all that stuff. The difficulty comes when this large demographic starts to retire or thinks about retiring or has already retired. Now, what does that do? Remember how when a large demographic comes into 
an economy, it creates inflation because there are more people fighting for the same amount of goods and services. But when we have something like this where you have a reverse population pyramid, this is the complete opposite of what you want for a strong, booming economy where you have a large amount of people fighting for those goods, services, and assets. Here, when you have the flipped population pyramid, you have the large majority of assets held by older individuals. It makes sense. You've accumulated more money in your life. You can purchase larger real estate stocks, whatever the case may be. So you have the oldest generation and the largest generation who have the most amount of assets, but anything related to do with economics, supply and demand, I'm sure you know, when you have a smaller amount of people demanding the large quantity of assets that is currently in an economy, you're going to get deflationary pressure. When you have less people fighting for a large uh, group of goods, services, and assets, this will inherently drive prices down because there's a lot of goods and services and assets here, but there's not that many people fighting for it. So if there's not a lot of demand, if there's not a lot of uh, people, you know, fighting over to purchase these assets. There's no competition. You're not going to get that huge driving inflation that a lot of economists are looking for. So demographics plays a major role in the global macro sense of things. Not j not day trading, not short term trading, but on a long term, you know, decade long. Uh, kind of analysis, demographics do play a very, very big role. So now let's look at the actual numbers for the different demographics around the world with this in mind. Let's first look at Japan, which has the second oldest median age in any country. Uh, it's 48.4 years old. That's the average median age for an individual in Japan, which is pretty old. And we can see right here, the yearly population growth rate is actually negative since 2009. So it's actually going uh, worse, where there's not even one person born for every person who passes away. So they have a shrinking population growth rate, which is very deflationary. Now let's look at the United States with this number in mind, the median average, the median age in Japan. All right, let's look at the median age of the United States, 38.3. So let's say it's around 10 years difference in the median age for Japan versus the United States. Now, it's not as bad, the yearly population growth rate, because Japan is actually negative, uh, whereas the United States still does have a little positive for the yearly growth rate. But we definitely see in this chart, uh, the dependable people as a percentage of working age in a population, uh, United States is still increasing slowly. It's that orange line right uh, right here, where it says 50, and then we go and uh, move up to 52.71. So because America is around 10 years older in the median age, uh, you know, it makes sense that we are lagging behind. But when we're looking at the potential outcome for the United States in terms of the demographics, it's not as aggressive as Japan in that you're going to have negative yearly population growth rate, but you're still going to have a substantial supply or a substantial pressure of deflation of substantial pressure of supply because there is still that huge baby boomer generation that is trying to sell assets, sell goods and services, and holds the majority of the wealth versus a smaller group of people fighting and competing for that larger group of goods and services and assets. So inherently, when you have a large demographic above where they're nearing retirement or, or kind of at the peak of their workforce, and you have a smaller demographic trying to purchase assets, goods and services, uh, everyday goods and services, that's going to be deflationary because you have a smaller group of people fighting for a large pool of those goods and services. Whereas on the opposite side, what we're going to talk about next is more inflationary. So let's look at the two other countries. Now we're going to look at uh, India and the Philippines. So they are two good demographics that are promoting inflation. They are similar to what uh, United States was when they were having their inflation in the 70s, 80s. Uh, and then we, we were also looking at Japan, like we saw in the demographics in the 1960s. There was a significant amount of people who were uh, being born. There's a lot of babies coming in. And then they had their huge inflationary move to the upside. Asset price 
Uh, the asset prices of basically everything in Japan, real estate stocks were absolutely ballooning. And this is the reason uh, f for understanding demographics. It plays a big role in the global macro sense of what countries could be looking at a potential boom and what countries could be looking at stagflation or deflation. So we've talked about potential uh, situations where America could face some deflation or at least stagflation. And now we're going to look at some countries that have a positive potential outcome from this uh, demographic cycle that comes and goes. India is the first place with the median age in India being 28.4, a significant drop in America at 38 and a huge gap uh, from Japan at 40. So India has a pretty young population and their dependency ratio is actually going down. We see that yellow line is going down pretty significantly. So there's more and more people able to work, join the workforce to support the older and younger individuals within that economy, which is a positive thing for output in any real economy because you have more and more people uh, receiving income, working, uh, getting the economic gears to go around. If you're retired, if you're not working, if you're just living off of interest on rent or uh, you know dividends or whatever the case may be, you're not going to create as much economic steam and economic output, obviously, as a person who is in their 30s, 40s, and 50s and at the peak of their spending. Very, very different dynamic in terms of how two people would spend their money. Now we're going to look at the Philippines, which is also a really good economy in the demographics. We see that the median age in the Philippines is 25.7 years old. India is 28, so pretty similar in terms of the demographics. We do see a slow decline in the yearly growth rate, but it's a pretty steady slope and we're around 1.35-ish, 1.4% for the yearly growth rate. So we're still getting people to uh, be born. There's still a demographic that is coming into the economy that is able to support the growth, support the demand of these goods and assets and, and prices going up in value, which is inflationary, which is what basically all central banks are looking for. That slow inflation, not too overheated that they have to, to raise interest rates, but enough that uh, wages are going up, goods and services are going up, and uh, you know, Deflation is basically the enemy of most central banks, as I'm sure you are all well aware. So that's going to be the two places that have a more positive demographic outlook in the next uh, couple of handful of years here in the decade because of just pure demographics. Now, you can't assume that's going to be the only play in any investment, any idea that you're going to partake in. But in terms of where you are looking for potential longer term opportunities, looking at countries that have a solid demographic for the promotion of inflation and of growth is very important. So that's just my two cents. Uh, in terms of the United States, obviously, we already have talked about uh, the United States entering a potential, potential, big word, uh, maybe deflation or at least stagflation where you're not really seeing that uh, job numbers growth. You may see the prices of assets go up just because of the stimulus and quantitative easing and free money with zero interest rates. But in terms of the actual economic health and growth of the country, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to see that uh, come to fruition for the United States in the next handful of years, in my personal belief. Uh, the Fed can save a financial market like the stock market, but they can't really save uh, an economy truly. You know, they could put mo uh, newly, freshly printed money in people's pockets, but unless they're going to go out and work and provide for their family through means of providing goods and services, not receiving a check from the government, that's not true prosperity for a country. That's my two cents on this. This is very, very long-term overall macro and analysis. This isn't for short-term swing trades, but I do think that demographics are important and not enough people are actually talking about the demographics. So definitely check it out. Look more into it. This is an extremely quick overview on the understanding and the structure of how demographics play a role in an economy. So thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate uh, you, you taking the time to consume content and, and try to um, 
obviously learn for yourself. And if you did find this useful, entertaining, educational, it'd be great if you would subscribe to our channel. It would mean a lot and you can watch and find more videos like this coming up. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, have a good one traders.